Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, welcome again to yet another episode of this series of ours, the Hajj Legacy Conference here uh, from Memphis Islamic Center. And tonight we are really so fortunate to have with us uh, my dear friend, uh, Sheikh Abdul Nasir Janga, hafizahullah. And we, uh, who doesn't know Sheikh Abdul Nasir Janga? <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him, the founder and director, and also an instructor at Qalam and Qalam Seminary. Uh, I have a lot of family members that actually benefited from that, and many of my students actually as well. Uh, from uh, the programs that Qalam offer. He's also a fellow Al-Maghrib instructor. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. Uh, tonight, we, uh, we are also privileged to have with us a uh, dear brother, uh, Sheikh Mikael Smith, who is also an instructor at Qalam. He was also a resident scholar in the Maryland area. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. Imam Mikael you know, is known for uh, his his book that I am yet to get a copy of. Inna I've heard, wa inna I have, I've heard so much about the book what a, itself. This is, and I read some reviews. There's such a failing of Qalam as an institution. Uh, no, it's, this it's, is a failure. This is my failure. I was supposed to actually get a copy from one of your big fans here locally. And so sorry. there was a miscommunication. But subhanAllah, this has been something that I've been thinking about for the past 10 years. The Prophet Wasallam's empathy, moral, mm -hmm. and emotional intelligence in Sheikh Mikhail comes. And mashallah, wrote this beautiful book that everybody's talking about, mashallah. Allah accept. Allah accept. Allah accept. Allah accept. Allah accept. Allah and Allah. I'm on, I, before we finish this, this conference, it will be in the mail for you, inshallah. <laughs> don't even worry. I, astaghfirullah. I, I'm so sorry. Exactly. I don't know how. Well, you'll yeah, have it within my two fault. days. Got, is it available on uh, Amazon? No, uh, we have it on our Qalam website. Um, okay. And uh, you'll get it to three to three to five yeah. business days really quick. Uh, uh, but I'm going to send it to you. So don't worry, inshallah. Subhanallah. You know, last time we met was around this time, mm. two years ago. Exactly. In, in, in the city, in the blessed city of our yeah. beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you remember that, right? Yes, yes. And Sheikh Sheikh uh, Abdul Nasser, as much as we we uh, communicate and connect uh, on a regular basis, we haven't met since Hajj of that same year, Sheikh Abdul Nasser, right? Subhanallah, yeah, 2017. That's right. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And I we, I was looking forward to meeting you there this year. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This season and uh, the entire Hajj experience, obviously, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, reminds us of the legacy of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his uh, seerah, his his life, uh, which is also an extension or a continuation uh, to the legacy of his, uh, you know, greatest uh, one of his greatest uh, forefathers, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, may, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon both of them, inshallah. Mm -hmm. We uh, hope that one day, inshallah, we'll reunite with them, inshallah ta'ala. But tonight, we have for you an episode where we want to discuss the similarities between the uh, life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and that of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi wa as well as their personalities and their, uh, you know, you know, various aspects of their uh, characters, alayhim as salam, you know, and we called it like father, like son. Um, you know, there are a lot of similarities between the two. From 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 the get go, Sheikh Abdul Nasser, you know, what what stands out when 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 we think of Prophet Ibrahim and his, I would I would consider the Prophet Muhammad to be the greatest of Prophet Ibrahim's descendants. He's the greatest of all mankind, alayhi salatu salam. What stands out? What you know, when, when you think of Prophet Ibrahim and Prophet Muhammad? One of the first things that um, really occurs to me immediately is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna Ibrahim ala awahun halim. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Ibrahim alayhi salam as being halim. You know, hilm technically is usually translated as forbearance. Um, the only issue with that translation is most people don't know exactly what that means. Um, <laughs> so a lot of times the way the Lughawiyun kind of, if you go into the lexicon, Lisan al-Harab and, you know, Tajul urus and things like that, and you look at the word hilm, they describe it as kind of a combination between sabr, hikmah, um, anat, which basically means being patient, having a lot of wisdom, like being very strategic, and also being having a very calm reaction and demeanor in the face of difficulty or in the face of a critical situation. So hidden forbearance basically means somebody who is very calm, somebody who is very reserved, somebody who does not get rattled in a crisis, and someone who is very thoughtful and deliberate and has a lot of wisdom in the steps that they take when everything around you is like the earth is moving, the earth is shaking, and you're able to remain calm, cool, and collected and know what to do in that situation. That's called hilm. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, Inna Ibrahima la awahun halim, that Ibrahim was very halim. Awah is kind of a beautiful word, which basically means that he was very compassionate. And then it says that he was Halim. And the Prophet وسلم, is described in the Quran itself as Raufun Rahim. The oh. Prophet وسلم, is also described as being compassionate and merciful and being very strong in the face of adversity and difficulty. And that's always one of the first things that jumps out at me is that you look at the stories in the Quran where Ibrahim is being thrown into a fire and Ibrahim is being told to leave his family and Ibrahim is being told in the desert and then he's being told to sacrifice his son and you know he's facing a tyrant and through all these situations you one thing you can read between the lines is he's always very calm cool and collected and then you turn and you look at the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it's the battle of badr they're outnumbered three to one they're armed to the teeth they're thirsty for blood and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is calm cool and collected in his tent hands raised above his head making dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they're standing at the trench with the enemy trying to get at them and burn Medina to the ground, the Khandaq, and the Prophet Sallallahu is talking about the victories of the future. You know, um, so I, one of the first similarities that really jumps out at me is the strength, the conviction, the resolve, and this calmness, a serenity that Ibrahim Alayhi Salam had and that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam exemplified. That's one of the big things that jumps out at me. SubhanAllah. So I just didn't want you to stop right there. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the Prophet وسلم, said, right, that he was the answer to the dua of Ibrahim. Mm. So Ibrahim makes a dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, answers that dua, you know, hundreds of years later. Mm. And it comes in the form of this man who was mercy to mankind. Right? SubhanAllah. It, you know, it just... You know, I, I was just reflecting on it just the other day that, you know, with with great sacrifice comes great reward. And, um, you know, everyone has du'as, everyone has dreams and wishes and ambitions and things that they hope for and they pray for. Um, but the thing that really fuels the power and the effectiveness in a person's du'a is the sacrifices behind it. Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know, Allah says himself. I mean, it doesn't matter what I think. Allah says, وَيْذِبْتَلَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنَّ That Ibrahim alayhi salam passed every single test Allah gave him. He sacrificed so much. After our messenger sallallahu alayhi salam, maybe there's no one who has sacrificed more than Ibrahim alayhi salam. And as a response, or in the aftermath of all those sacrifices, when he makes dua after raising the foundations of the Kaaba, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ and his son Ismail السلام, another one of the forefathers of the Prophet السلام, they make dua then at that time رَبَّنَا وَبَعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا that oh Allah send amongst the people my progeny and the people that will populate this area and will pray in this sacred house of yours and worship here and do tawaf here and pray here that send amongst them a messenger who will be from them. 
He will recite upon them your signs and will um, recite to them your verses and will explain to them your greatness. And he will teach them the scripture, the book, the revelation, and then how to live that revelation, which is what we call the sunnah of the Prophet him, And then he will purify them. He will practically teach them on a day-to-day -day basis what to do and how to live their lives so that they can continuously better themselves, purify themselves, purge themselves of their evil every single day, become better and better and better. And he made that dua and subhanAllah, like you just exactly as you said, so many millennia later, only Allah knows how many years passed, but so many millennia and generations later, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam standing at that place of the Kaaba that Ibrahim Alaihissalam raised the foundations of when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam purged it and you know removed all the idols from it at Fatha Mecca, the conquest of Mecca, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ana da'wa tu Abi Ibrahim. I am the answer of the prayer of my forefather Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. And in that you see you know, the, the like father, like son, that the thing that connects us that is so powerful and beautiful, and it is more powerful than anything else that connects us, is that connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our faith in Allah, our sacrifices for the sake of Allah. That's what bonds us together. That's what joins us together. And that was the most. Blood is blood. It has its own rights. It, like the Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith, inna lil rahimi haqqun. There is, that, that is true. But what is greater than blood is that bond of Iman and that bond of Amalus Salih and the bond of sacrifices, manasik, sacrifices for the sake of Allah. Like Ibrahim Ali Sana made dua, wa arina manasikana. Tell us, Ya Allah, show us how we are to worship you and how to serve you. And um, that's that's what's so remarkable. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu when he went for Hajjat al-Wida and the Prophet Sallallahu told the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, it's a very... Um, it's a jarring narration. Uh, every time I just kind of sit and I think about the Prophet Sallallahu saying that, my heart shakes that, you know, um, what the Sahaba must have felt when they heard that. Uh, when the Prophet Sallallahu said that, خُذُوا عَنِّي manasikakum. One narration says, خُذُوا minni manasikakum. Um, that take from me how to perform the rituals of Hajj. And then he says, لَعَلِّي لَا أَحُجَّ بَعْدَ عَامِ هَذَا that is very likely and very possible that I will not do Hajj after this year. Um, I can't even imagine what the Sahaba must have felt, what a, what a punch to the gut that must have felt like to hear the Prophet say that. But nonetheless, the Prophet said, learn from me, observe how I'm doing Hajj. And it is so remarkably profound that all these monastic and the steps of Hajj are following so closely in the footsteps of Ibrahim alayhi salam that you're able to see that powerful spiritual connection. Sheikh Mikael, you know, I, I want to bring you for a second here. Um, you know, subhanAllah, you know, Sheikh Abdul Nasser, uh, you know, if you remember Sheikh Abdul Nasser, you gave this beautiful seminar uh, at my old masjid in, in California. Mm. And, and when we, when you go over the adhkar or the prayers and supplications that you say in salah, there comes, you know, salat al-Ibrahimiyyah that we say at the end of the salah, mm -hmm. we say uh, in salat al-Janazah. And even when the Prophet Sallallahu was asked, you know, how do we salute you? How do we send our, you know, salutations to you? How do we, how do we pray for you? He actually taught, taught the Sahaba that, and he taught all of us that. And in it, the Prophet Sallallahu actually mentions who? Ibrahim, we even call it a Salat al-Ibrahimi. Mm. So there is this sense of like loyalty and like wafa. I don't know what's a, what's a, what's a, a translation for the word wafa that the Prophet have, and uh, he celebrated and he uh, you know commemorated the the uh, the you know Ibrahim alayhi salam, and he was always grateful to to that connection that he had even in the day to day uh, du'as that we make. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam teaches us to to say. أصبحنا أو أمسينا على فطرة الإسلام وعلى كلمة الإخلاص وعلى دين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى ملة أبينا إبراهيم. And he always refers him as our father Ibrahim عليه السلام. In that in that particular dua that we make, the salat al-Ibrahimiyya. اللهم صلي على محمد وآل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وآل محمد كما بارك. It just gives me the impression that there the 
you know, Prophet Muhammad was not what wasn't only the fulfillment of the dua of Prophet Ibrahim, but he was also the person that revived the legacy of Ibrahim right. as it was being, you know, actually uh, destroyed by, uh, you know, by Quraysh and by paganism. Um, Sheikh Mikhail, any reflections regarding that connection that the Prophet Sallallahu that we find in that dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he taught us that we are supposed, it, it, it looks like to me, it feels like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wants us to remember Ibrahim every single day. Hmm. Yeah, you know, subhanAllah, bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulillah, wa ala ali wa sahbihi, wa man wa ala. I think we need to reflect on the blessings that we get from being a part of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of the blessings, one of the most tremendous blessings that we get by being in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is this very unique connection with Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. Um, and so in Juma today, I was actually talking about that very thing that you just brought up right now, which is in every single salah, when we send prayers on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we also mention the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Abraham. And I think what our community needs to be cognizant of is that we live in a, in a, in a Christian, madam, the majority of which is a Christian country. Um, and the Quran is teaching us that we, the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are the most entitled to lay claim to the legacy of Abraham because we are connected to none other than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so when when we read the verse, Inna awla nasi bi Ibrahim nabi. Allahu Akbar. Allah says, indeed, the most deserving of or those who are lay the most claim to Ibrahim are those who follow him and this prophet right here. And this prophet right here, alayhi salatu was the was the 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 uh, the outcome of that prophetic supplication made, uh, you know, uh, generations before. And so I think what our listeners need to be cognizant of is that we need to reclaim, teach our children throughout these nine days, these eight days, talk about the legacy of Abraham and talk about how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was the fulfillment of that legacy. Um, and so I think just to touch upon that point, that, that's the main thing I really wanted to, us to see the connection. When we read that, uh, um, what we're seeing is that we're always being re reminded that we are connected to Abraham. That's my message. And, and, and the connection, The Prophet on Yom al Nahar was asked, What is this? What are we doing? What is this slaughtering? The Prophet Sallallahu said, Sunnata Abikum. This is your father. Don't forget your father's way. This is your father's sunnah. And so, again, I, I just think when we think of the Salah Al Nabi Salat Ibrahimiyyah, when we think of that, I think the first thing that we as a community need to, need to realize is that in the Aul and Nasbi Ibrahim, Nabi. Those who lay the best claim to the Prophet uh, to Ibrahim are those who follow him, abahi, hajj, like subhanAllah, who follows Abraham today more than we do? No, no one. Uh, yeah, that's like, exactly what I was thinking about. Who follows Abraham about more? Yeah. Stop right there. Just stop there. Okay. What do you do? What do you guys do? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Okay. Now, shuf, shuf al-Islam. Look what we do. Whose so, style resembles that of Ibrahim the most? Yeah. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Yeah. So those are some reflections I feel we need to reflect or, or think about when we sin that Salat Ibrahimi regularly. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the fulfillment and completion 
of that great legacy. So one thing uh, before you go to the next statement, I think we need to understand the primacy of Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. There are verses in which Allah connects Noah to Abraham. So mm. it's as if as if back and front people are connected to this center force. You know, it's it's ajib. It's really interesting. Uh, the verse slips my mind. Um uh, yeah, that 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 one. There's one more specifically, where the specific connection to Noah's relationship to Abraham. Yeah. Mm. And so, what I'm trying to show is that back <laughs> in front, <laughs> I, I I believe that's Allah. it. That, yeah, it, it slips my mind at the moment right now. Um, yeah. but. The, the point I'm trying to highlight is the primacy of Abraham and how right now, you know, if you talk to, if you do an interfaith uh, event, it's called, you know, the, the Abrahamic faiths, mm. you know, the Abrahamic faiths. Mm. And Allah is telling us, Anta awla bi Ibrahim. Ma kan Ibrahim wala nasraniya, wala kin kana hanifa muslima. So I think those are just a few thoughts I had regarding Salat Ibrahimiya and what we should be reflecting on on a daily basis regarding our connection to Abraham. Mm. Sheikh Abdul Nasser, before I let you go, I know you have to run. Uh, you know, the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ in Surah, uh, in surah Al-Nisa, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 124, I think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, took Ibrahim as Khalil. I'm going to let the, you know, the explanation of what that term Khalil means to you, inshallah ta'ala. But at the same time, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in a hadith says that if I was to take anyone as a Khalil, right, I, it would have been, um, it would have been Abu Bakr. However, the Prophet sallallahu reserved that spot in his heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet is also Khalilullah. So there, there are similarities between the two. Allah declared Ibrahim to be Khalil. The Prophet ﷺ declared Allah subhanahu declared his khulla to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know. So when uh, so the word khulla, right, it occurs in multiple places in the Quran as well. Um, you know, um the wala khullatun wala shafa'atun, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about the day of judgment and talking about like people who um, did not believe and talking about how they will have no connection, no friendship. But the word khulla in khalil, which comes from that, it literally comes from the root word, which means for two things to be intertwined or for two things to be completely entangled, uh, mm. intertwined and tangled. That's why what I'm doing with my fingers right now is called takhlil. Like I'm yeah. getting in between them or we do this with our beard when we make wudu. So that's where it comes from. So when two people are just completely intertwined, you know, um, just just completely, their lives are intertwined, then that is a level of a relationship, a friendship um, that they have that is described as khulla, and they are described as being a khalil of one another. And so that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such an honor, such a prestige. Uh, of course, it's understood figuratively, right? It's above and beyond Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be described as a human being. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is honoring Ibrahim alayhi salam by saying that he is the Khalil of Allah. And the thing that always gets me every time is that, you know, like you said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that, uh, that if I was to take a friend like that, a best, best friend from the human beings, Abu Bakr is my closest friend amongst the humans. But if I was to take a best, best friend from amongst human beings, it would have been Abu Bakr. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already reserved me as his best, best friend. And then furthermore, what it reminds me of is on the night of Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, that when the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the lengthier narration uh, that is mentioned in the books of Sirah, Ibn Ishaq, and others, and in Subul um, al-Huda uh, wal-Rashad, it's detailed out with a lot of detail. 
that at the place of Masjid Aqsa, Jerusalem, when, it, when the Prophet ﷺ goes there and he leads all the Prophets in prayers, and then some of the Prophets, they shared a few words uh, after they, uh, the Prophet ﷺ led them in prayer, and Ibrahim ﷺ spoke last, and then the Prophet ﷺ spoke. And Ibrahim ﷺ, after the Prophet ﷺ spoke, Ibrahim ﷺ says, this is why Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala took him as his Habib. Mm. This is why Allah took him as his Habib. Um, so yes, the Prophet ﷺ did talk about him also being a Khalil of Allah. But beyond that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared his muhabba for the Prophet ﷺ by calling him wa anta habibi, that you are my beloved. Mm -hmm. And um, in that as well, you see that very profound connection between them. Zakallah <laughs> Sheikh, we do love you. <laughs> you know, you have a very special heart in our uh, special place in our hearts. Before you depart, inshallah ta'ala, we want to request from you, inshallah, to make dua for our community members, mm -hmm. especially those who may be suffering from any symptoms or have any, uh, you know, ailment. Uh, also, our, you know, first responders, mm -hmm. many of whom are Muslims. You know, we have a lot of uh, medical professionals here who are in the front line, uh, you know, putting their own lives and the lives of their family. Uh, members, uh, you know, at risk, but doing what uh, they were entrusted with. So if you can just, inshallah, make dua that Allah blesses them and blesses our community members and mm. and relieves uh, us and humanity from this, from this mm. inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, send down his miraculous cure. Anything and everything is capable, uh, mm -hmm. possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rab, nothing is outside of your means and your grasp, O oh Allah. We ask you to send down a miraculous cure to cure all of humanity, to protect each and every single one. Those who have passed, may they be counted amongst the shuhada. Those who have suffered illness, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them shifa and strength and full recovery. Those who are, are, have not been afflicted with the illness, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them and protect them and give them continued health. Those who have predispositions and those who have you know uh other issues that make them more susceptible may allah protect them and keep them in his protection amin ya rabbil alameen um and then uh, we we continue to keep each other in our duas inshallah and i <laughs> eagerly look forward to the post covid opportunity to come and visit memphis and uh spend some time with you sheikh inshallah inshallah ta'ala inshallah and you, we, you have an open invitation, inshallah. Tom's barbecue is waiting for you, <laughs> inshallah. inshallah May Allah also allow us uh, the opportunity to come together, inshallah, in the sacred land, be in uh, in a manner that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I look forward to seeing you, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you, Shaykh. May Allah bless your family. Thank you for stopping by. Shaykh Mikail, we can still. Uh, we can still have you, right, for another. Yeah, yes, yes, I'm with you, inshallah. I'm with you, inshallah. <laughs> You know, subhanAllah, we, we talked about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's, you know, love for Abu Bakr, you know, right there. Um, and, and love for his, for his, for his people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sheikh uh, Abdul Nasser mentioned earlier that he was very compassionate, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So was Ibrahim. And we see when we look at the stories in the Quran that talk about Ibrahim's, uh, you, you know, he even... In the Quran, it tells us that Ibrahim inquired about the fate of the people of Lut. Mm. Right? Mm. He was concerned, right? Uh, also, you know, we, we find that the Prophet وسلم, had this compassion and he had, uh, you know, he could have, you know, got, you know he could have, uh, especially after Ta'if, when the people of Ta'if, you know, responded in the manner they did to the Prophet وسلم, and he had the opportunity to have them destroyed the process and then, you know, chose that they, they would be spared, you know, so for the sake of future, you know, maybe generations, you know, so we, so we find that Ibrahim alayhi salam, I mean, I couldn't find anywhere in spite of what they did to him, Ibrahim alayhi salam being very bitter or cursing his people, right? I, I, don't, I don't see that. At some point, he had to part ways with them because yes. it was... But I don't see uh, any any sort of uh, you know desire to take vengeance or to to have them curse or destroyed, and you don't find that in the in also in the seerah of the Prophet mm -hmm. There were times where the Prophet had to establish justice, but you you, you know 
whenever the Prophet had the opportunity to spare them, you find you find him leaning towards that. You know, would that be something that the Prophet was inspired by? Maybe the example of Prophet Ibrahim. Maybe it's uh, it's the same spirit that they had. You know, what 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 reflections do you have regarding? Yeah, I th I think that's a, a a beautiful correlation to look at. Um, because. I, something that I got from what you're saying is that, you know, a lot of times when we look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we forget that he was human and that he felt weak sometimes. Um, uh, you know, walola and thabatnaka, if it wasn't that we made you firm, you would have inclined to them, Allah says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, and we forget that it was difficult for him. Um, and so the reason I bring that up is because when we read the stories of Abraham, alayhi salatu wasalam, in the Quran, we cannot forget that the Prophet himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, was the first addressee, mukhatab. He was the first one being addressed. He was the first one getting that message. Um, and so when we start to dissect and analyze the various verses in the Quran, we start to see why why Allah would say to the Prophet first and then us by means of the Prophet وسلم, that indeed in Abraham is the best example. And so when we start to look, what we notice is there are, there's, there's so many striking examples where we can see the, the prophet being inspired almost by the Abrahamic compassion, as you, as you mentioned, um, the A Abrahamic uh, you know, forbearance, as Sheikh Abdul Nasser mentioned, the, the Abrahamic, what I would call emotional intelligence of Abraham, would we see it infused or almost learned, uh, taken in by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And so I just want to reflect on a few examples of that. Um, one of the most delicate uh, interactions and most important interactions in our social interactions are the parent, son, parent and child um, relationship. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the life of Abraham, uh, wasalam, we see this very unique uh, example because his father, his father, Azara, is an, a, a maker of idols. Um, it, he's literally in the house where idolatry is being, uh, 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 you know, propagated. Um, and we see this uh, this uh, uh, this staunch hatred going against Abraham. And so when we look at a few verses, if we look at Surah Maryam, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding this scenario, His father said, like, are you turning away from our gods, Abraham? Now that's exactly what the people of Mecca said to him. Who? Yeah. Muhammad yeah. sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Prophet, so, Ibrahim, so Prophet yeah. Ibrahim grew up in a household that basically was the industry of of idolatry. So almost the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam grew up in Mecca, you know, and his tribe were the basically the keepers, uh, you know, and and they also pretty much controlled. Yeah, the, it, the, it's yeah. it's a striking it's a striking Ajib. similarity. Ajib, yeah. it's very beautiful because it's literally literally the Meccan way of life. The Meccan way of life is uh, is based on the, the the economics of idolatry. Literally, that's how they live, and their fear of accepting monotheism was that our whole way of life will be destroyed. How yeah. will we live? And similarly, now the Prophet Sallam, he, he his father obviously wasn't there, but. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a son is the son of the people, especially in the tribal, the, the, the tribal environment. Muhammad Sallallahu is the, a son of the community, you could say. And so when one of their great sons of the community 
starts to teach monotheism, look what, look what the response was from Abraham's father in the Quran. He says, they, they said, if you don't stop, the father said, if you don't stop, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punish you. I'm going to throw these stones at you. I'm going to throw these rocks at you. And literally leaving thought if the, that's the what happened to the prophet. Yeah. Literally leaving thought if the prophet was stoned. And, and it keeps going. It keeps going because they say, he says, leave me, leave me, get out of here, get out of my face. And Abraham responds by saying, and here's where what you brought in. This is the point I want to, this was the correlation because you were, uh, uh, Sheikh Faqi, you were speaking and, and focusing on that compassion, that tahammul, that forbearance. And here we see it. Abraham goes, Qala salamun alayk. The moment the father said, get out of my house. He didn't say, well, you're going to hell anyway. You guys are insane. Da, 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 da. He goes, salamu alayk. Peace be upon you. Peace be upon you. And then he goes further. Now, this is where we see the levels of Ihsan being taught to the Prophet. See, what I'm trying to get everyone to, to imagine and see is that the Prophet has to be taught. Okay, I don't want to get too much into emotional intelligence, but one of the things that's extremely important for us to understand is that when we talk about following the sunnah, many times we look at just the message and not the methodology of transferring the message. And so what I want our listeners to think about for a moment is when the prophet was given revelation, he wasn't just given the do's and the don'ts, but he was also given and, and inspired with the best way to pass on that message. So when the Quran tells this story of Abraham and his father, the Prophet Sallallahu is getting a workshop on dealing with adversity from your close kin. And so now, are you still with me? Can you hear me inshallah? Everyone, fine, okay. Okay, just making sure. Uh, so now the, 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 the Prophet Sallallahu is learning in real time from Allah, how a previous person, his father in, in, in lineage and in prophecy, his father dealt with that. And so now we see the Prophet Sallallahu literally embodying those methods of dealing with his community when adversity was faced. And so this verse, so what does he say next? He says, Qala salamun alayk. Abraham goes, salamun alayk. Now you read Surah Furqan. When the ignorant speak to them, we say, peace be upon you. See how that sunnah has now been passed on through Prophet Muhammad from Abraham to us. Then it goes forward. I will ask my Lord to forgive you. Now the very beautiful uh, similarity that lies here is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even when someone was passing away on nifaq, hypocrisy, or almost kufr, the Prophet Sallallahu would literally say, I'm gonna ask forgiveness. And, and so let me explain to the listeners. When Abdullah bin Ubay bin Sulul passed away, the Prophet Sallallahu prayed his janazah and the Prophet asked Allah to forgive him. Our listeners need to understand that this man, Abdullah bin Ubay bin Sulur, was a staunch enemy and the leader of all of the hypocrites of Medina. And what that means, when we say hypocrite, what that means is externally he's a Muslim, but internally he has zero belief in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When that man dies, Everyone who's a sincere Muslim is saying, good riddance, <laughs> good riddance. But the Prophet وسلم, says, no, this is a soul. This is a human being. I'm going to ask Allah to forgive him. So he insisted and he begged Allah, 
a verse was revealed telling the prophet, if you ask forgiveness 70 times, they'll never be forgiven. The prophet said, I'm going to do it 71 times. I'll do it 71 times. That's how much. So, astaghfirullah rabbi was said by Abraham in the same sunnah was followed by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Therefore, it's teaching us that even when uh, hatred comes at you, don't let hatred make you a person filled with hate and rage. And, and that's what happens many times with oppression. Oppression is a very interesting tool that shaitan uses because many times the one who is oppressed becomes so negative due to the oppression that the moment they're given power, then they become oppressors and the cycle never ends. The cycle never ends. And so what we're taught through this example and through Abraham, then through the prophet is that never let hatred spoil you. Don't let your dislike for another group of people stop you from being just and what's good. And then if we move forward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Abraham said, I'm going to move away from you and what you worship. And here we see the prophet did hijrah. He moved away. I have to move away. I have to move away. I have to go away. So I, I kind of just wanted our listeners to get one example from the father-son relationship whereby we see this amazing correlation and symmetry existing in the life of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But it doesn't end there. Let me just add a little bit more if you don't mind. Go the relationship it. with a father and a son, we also now get an example where Abraham is now the father with his son. And we see him and Ismail, alayhi salatu was salam, the unique relationship that they have. Um, we, we, we know the story of Hajra. Uh, we know Abraham having to leave. Um, we, we know that Abraham came back to visit his son a few times to check on his house see how they're doing. You know, we of course know the incident of the biggest test, the biggest test, uh, the order to sacrifice Abraham, uh, Ismail. And, and so I guess I just want us to look at one moment, one thing. When Abraham was given the order to sacrifice, this is an order from God. When this order came, he did not command Ismail, but rather entered into dialogue with Ismail. He says, what, what do you think? What's your opinion? And I, and I really just want to digress for a moment because the Muslim community really needs to think about this moment. Because so many of our parents become very authoritative and feel that our children have no opinion. And if they have an opinion, the opinion doesn't matter. And you may say, well, well what, how does that connect to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I'll make the connection in a moment, but first let's stick on this point for a moment. God, Allah gave Abraham a direct command. And Abraham says to his son, son, what's your opinion? Do you know how good Ismail must have felt that his father valued his opinion. That's top level emotional intelligence right there. That's making someone feel important. That's making someone feel special. And that's despite the fact that he got revelation. We don't even get revelation and we'll say, son, uh, I don't care what you think. Be quiet. You don't know what you're talking about. You're too young. I said so. Because I said so. <laughs> because I said so, that's it. You know what I'm saying? SubhanAllah, man. Uh, it's just really amazing. Amazing. 
when you dissect that relationship and how he asked him his opinion, despite having a revelation from God, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as uh, Azza wa Jal. But here we are, I think we as a community can learn a direct message. Now, here's the question. Well, how does that connect to the Prophet? Oh, yeah. Well, Anas bin Malik, I believe it's Anas bin Malik. He said, I never saw anyone do more mashwara than the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mashwara, brothers and sisters, means consulting, seeking other people's advice. What's your opinion? What's your opinion? The Prophet Sallallahu has access to revelation. But despite the fact of having access to revelation, the Prophet Sallallahu is reported by the Sahaba that we never saw anyone asking other people's advice more than we saw the Prophet Sallallahu consulting other people. You know why that's important? From an emotional intelligence important perspective, the reason that's important is because you're giving people a platform. You're giving them the ability to, to, to be a part of the decision-making. You're learning from them. You know, you're, it's very important part of building a community that we let all voices be heard. And not just some people sitting at the top saying, well, I was elected, so that I'm gonna make the decisions. No, the Prophet was chosen by Allah, but despite that, he taught us a better method which was he sought the opinions of people similar mm -hmm. to the way similar to the way that Abraham said to his son Ismail what do you think what's your view on this so uh, just a few subhanallah reflections on uh, the similarities man it's just it's just really beautiful uh, it's just beautiful similarities subhanallah unfortunately we ran out of time i wanted to touch upon two more points, but subhanAllah, with you uh, while having you, but maybe inshallah we'll have you back inshallah ta'ala. Bismillah. We promise? Bismillah. Allah 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 Allah. Allah. Yeah, because, inshallah. because the Prophet just like Ibrahim السلام, and many of the prophets, whenever they also had to stand up for the truth or to stand up to wrongdoers, they did it. Ibrahim السلام, challenged a Namrud, right? Yes. You know, and, and the Prophet وسلم, you know, challenge the, the 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 various forces that were you know around during his time, and he reached out to them, right? And he presented Islam to the Aslim Taslim Yutik Allahu Ajraka They were they were very open about uh, their da'wah and their relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Put Allah Azza wa first before anyone. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's blessings and peace be upon them both and Ameen. all of the prophets and the messengers Ameen. of Allah. Inshallah, before we. Uh, you know, conclude if you can, inshallah ta'ala, make dua for our community yes. members. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbina Alameen. Allahumma laka alhamdu kullu wa laka shukru kullu wa ilayka yarju al-amru kullu alaniyata wa sirru. Allahumma laka alhamdu hatta tarda wa laka alhamdu idha radit wa laka alhamdu ba'da rida. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa maulana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم اللهم إن نسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب عمل يقربنا إلى حبك يا الله we ask you to guide our hearts يا الله يا الله we ask you to alleviate the suffering of those who are going through trials and tribulations, Ya Allah. Amen, amen. Ya Allah, we ask you and beg of you, Ya Allah. We ask you and beg of you, Ya Allah, to send down, Ya Allah, Shifa. Send down Shifa for us, Ya Allah. Amen. Ya Allah, we turn to you humbly begging you, Ya Allah. Send down Shifa and give us Afia, Ya Allah. Amen. Give us Afia and tranquility, Ya Allah. Amen. Give us health, Ya Allah, and Siha, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to remove this calamity from us, Ya Allah. We turn to you humbly begging you, Ya Allah, remove this calamity Amen. from us, Ya Rahman Ya Allah, we ask you and beg of you, Ya Allah. Amen. Ya Allah, we ask you and beg of you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to never make our musibah in our religion, Ya Allah. Amen. Ya Allah, never let there be a calamity in our faith, Ya Allah. Amen. Ya Allah, we ask you to give us strong iman. Give us children who have strong iman, Ya Allah. Amen. Ya Allah, make us leaders of, the, of those with 
taqwa, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to guide us, Ya Allah. We ask you to guide us, Ya Allah. We ask you to guide us, Ya Allah. We ask for your mercy, Ya Arhamar Rahimin. Subhana Rabbika. Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifu. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillah. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh Mikail. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from, uh, from you. May Allah bless you and your family and uh, our Muslim brothers and sisters in Dallas. Jazakallah uh, khairan for, for taking the time and joining us. My dear brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala, tomorrow night we also have another episode. Tomorrow we'll be, we will be talking about the house of Ibrahim alayhi uh, salam, other members of this blessed family whom Allah Azza wa Jal has uh, blessed. Uh, so join us, inshallah, join myself, Sheikh Yasir, and Imam Anwar tomorrow night, bi'adhanillah Azza wa Jal, same time, 9 p.m. Central Time. Uh, until then, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you all safe. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Mikhail. Barakallah fiqh. Wa fiqhum yubarak. Wa fiqhum yubarak. Inshallah, I'm going to...